Today is our last day to talk about points, lines, and planes, and rays and segments, right? So we already know a little bit about this, and what we're wanting to do is actually to be able to start to draw these types of figures as well. So let's start with talking about, first of all, this particular guy right here. When I want to, to give two other names for, what does that symbol mean? Line, okay, we remember that from Friday and from Thursday, line DE. Okay, so we want to give two names for line DE. Okay, so what do you think? I'm going to highlight it first or color it. I'm going to color it blue. This is line DE, the line that goes through points D and E. So line R. Line R is a suggestion. Do you agree or disagree? Disagree why? Okay, so we think it might be the name of the plane and not the line. And I like what you're thinking. Okay? So R is not a point. There's no dot next to it, and it's lowercase, right? So that could be a name of a plane, right? But typically when we want to name a plane, we will name it with a capital letter with no dot next to it. Okay, so this is the name of the plane. And this is the name of this line. But by disagreeing, you show that you're brave and that you were paying attention, right? Because this is something to be aware of and, and notice. Okay, so I agree. Line R is the name of that R, or one other name for that for that line. Okay. Very nice. All right, what's another name for that line? Um, you could potentially name the plane that it's in, but then we would also include other stuff, wouldn't we? Okay, so you want to call it plane C containing line D and E, but we just really want to kind of ignore everything else about it and just give another name for this particular line. So is there another point on that line? A. So could we use that as part of its name? C A A E. And E D is another way just to write it backwards, right? And that's the same same line, but another way of writing it. So we could call it line E D. We've just reversed the order. We could call it D A. A D, reversing the order. And then someone suggested AE or EA. Okay? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to give another name for this particular line. And because there are three points on this line, it doesn't matter which of the, of the two of the three points that we use. So we can call it line AE or line EA. It doesn't have to be alphabetical. Or we can call it line DA or line AD, or originally it was called DE, but we can also reverse the letters and call it EA or ED. So we have lots of different names for this line, don't we? If you give me any of those, those are right. Make sense? Any two that they're asking for, they're asking for at least two. So watch your directions. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when I'm giving you a quiz or a test, I won't leave that many possibilities because I have so many more answers to look for. Um, DE was our original. So, yes, calling it ED is fine. Absolutely. Yep, that was the original, though. Make sense? Great questions. Okay, next thing we need to do is we need to name another name for a plane. So, this is plane C. That's the plane's name, right? So, how many letters do we have to use if we want to name a plane? Three. three letters. Okay, and what's special about those three letters? Anything but... Yeah, it can't be outside of it, right? We can't use B. And so if we say D, A, E, we're naming collinear points, right? Can we use collinear points to name a plane? Almost, but not quite. We can use two collinear points. But we have to have one other point that's on the plane but not on the line, F. So do we have a symbol for plane? No, so we have to unfortunately write the word plane. And then you said D, A, F was one possibility. Or D, E, F would be another possibility. Or F, E, D. 
and we can change the order up as much as we want to, right? Um, we could also say FAD, ABF, right? So lots and lots of possibilities, and there are probably others. Bless you. Make sense? Questions on this one? Okay, so next. Let's look at our next block on our notes sheet. And now it wants to know another name for, what does this symbol mean? Segment. Why is it a segment? No arrows, missing arrows, so it's a segment. Okay, so what's another name for segment PR? And this one's the tricky one. Yeah, there's only one other name. So if I highlight PR, that means I started at T and I went to R. So a suggestion was, well, RT is the same thing. It doesn't matter which way I start. I still want to talk about that same portion of that line, right? And so the only other name is RT, and we put a segment on top. You guys know this stuff from Friday and Thursday. Good job. Questions on this one? All right, let's keep moving so we have some time to work. All right, next one. So suddenly now... We have two lines that are intersecting, right? And our book is not going to put a point here, even though point T, they label it, but they don't always put that point. Point T is the intersection of those two lines. So the directions are asking to name all rays with an endpoint T. Remind me, what was a ray? Good, a dot with a line extending. So it starts at an endpoint, and then it heads off in one direction, and there's only one arrowhead. Make sense? So where's our starting point? T. So we're going from T to R. All right, T to R starts at T, and it heads in the R's direction. What does my symbol look like above it? Yeah, a line with just one arrowhead. That's PR. Okay, ray PR. All right, now we need another one. What's another ray? PQ. So if we start at P and go in the direction of Q, we have another ray with an end point, a beginning point of P. I heard someone say TS. TS starts at P and goes toward S. So TS is another ray with an endpoint of T. So far so good? All right, what's our last ray that has an endpoint of T? TT. You see how they sometimes having colored pencils or what have you helps you do some of this? TT is this other one, and TT starts at T, heads in the direction of T, and to make life simpler, we always make the arrowhead go to the right. So far so good? All right, now they want to know which ones are opposite rays. Remind me, what did opposite mean? PS and PQ. Why are PS and PQ opposite rays? They go in the opposite direction. They form a line. They form a straight line. Okay, one went northeast, one went southwest, right? or actually probably northwest and southeast, <laughs> okay? And so the other pair of opposite rays are PR and PQ. Lots of vocabulary, but you're picking it up quickly. Make sense? What questions do you have about rays? All right, so here's where it gets fun. We get to start sketching some things. So they're going to ask you to sketch. Now, here's a heads up. I always make you or ask you to do more difficult work on your homework than I do on your tests. Tests and quizzes, I always back it off and, and pick the easier things because I want you to practice the more difficult things and then ease it up a little bit and just make sure that you've got those basics. Does that make sense? So even though I'm asking you to draw these things now, I won't necessarily ask you to do that on the test, but I want you to, tr to practice it because it helps you visualize and understand what the, what the drawings that the book has mean. Does that make sense? All right, so if you're doing your homework every day 
and you're really trying, you're not just writing answers down or copying someone else's work, you'll do fine in this class. It's the students who want to cut the corners and just write something down, copy something down, just complete it, just to be done, that have trouble. Does that make sense? All right, so here we go. We want to sketch two intersecting lines, A and B, that lie on plane W. So here's a hint. Draw the plane first. Okay. So when we draw a plane, what does a plane look like? Well, not, uh, not a good question. Not, not an airplane, right? but a geometry plane. What have we been seeing when we see a plane? Like a diamond or a rhombus or a parallelogram, right? So start by drawing your, your parallelogram or your rhombus that looks like a plane. And label that plane W. Exactly, good job. And label it W. You want to make it kind of big so that you have some rooms to work, okay? Yeah, just look at the other examples on your paper, and that can kind of help. Yeah, a, a, a box that kind of slid to the side. Oftentimes, we like to put the plane's name in a corner. Most of the time, it's often in the, in the upper right corner, but it doesn't have to be. Okay? So far, so good? All right, now we need to have intersecting lines. What does it mean if lines intersect? They cross, right? They're not parallel. They cross, okay? So draw two lines on that plane that are crossing, right? Yeah, that's fine. Absolutely. Usually off to the side. Never never right where they intersect. We don't want to confuse people. So plane W and then a line A, lowercase a for line names, a line B. And they're intersecting, and they're on the plane. And it doesn't tell us what the point of intersection is, so we don't have to label this point that where they cross. Not too bad, right? Easy. Okay, next one. Now we're going to may, uh, draw a line D that intersects plane D in only one point. And we're going to label that point A. So draw a plane. Anytime you see something about a plane, draw a plane. And even if your example doesn't ask for a plane and you draw it, that's okay. I won't ever take off points that you did more than you were asked to do. Okay, so draw your rhombus. Draw that parallelogram. Make sure you label it. Um, because we want to be able to show that there's a plane there. And without those edges, we don't know that there's something there. So it's like having a kind of a, sh a sheet of paper here to say there's things that are on it and things that maybe go through it. Okay? So we label that plane D. And we want line D to intersect that plane in only one point. So think about a piece of paper or a desk. And a pencil is going through it, right? It's touching it in one spot and coming out the other end. So how did we do, how did we denote that? How do we signify it? You have to draw some dotted lines. Question. Yes, point A should be where it intersects. Absolutely. So if we we have a line coming through, we want to stop at point A, and then to show that it's going through it and not staying flat on it to make it 3D looking, we have to show some dotted lines and then have it coming out the other end. So far, so good? And what is that line's name? That line is a little d, right? So you put a little d up next to it with no dot, because it's not a point, it's a line name d. And it goes through plane d at point A. Does that make sense? All right. Questions on this one? All right, next one. Give you time to work here. Sketch a plane X that contains line P2 and a point B not on line P2. So start by drawing. 
We are. Okay. Start by drawing what? Anytime you have to draw a plane, draw a plane first, right? That way you have some place to put stuff. Label your plane X. That looks great. Well, be careful, because B is supposed to be on the plane, right? Oh, okay. Yep. So we don't want B to be off the plane. We want it to be in the plane. All right. So seeing great things on your paper. We've got a plane X and a line PQ. That's that the plane contains PQ, right? Do we want it to go through it? No, we want it to be on it somewhere. So here's our PQ. We have a P and a point Q. We'll put dots there. And where does B need to be? In the plane off the line. Anywhere in the plane off the line. Make sense? All right. Questions on this one? Last example. Second last example. Two more, yes. Okay, now this is a tough one. Because now we want to sketch two planes, plane R and plane S, and those planes are going to intersect at line AB. Just like having two pieces of paper and one's going through the other piece of paper. Two planes intersecting in a line. Think about a book, right? When we open a book, we have a binder. The binding is where that they are intersecting. And it's not easy to draw. And once you try it, I'll show you what it's supposed to look like, right? And then I will show you a, a shortcut, an easier way to do it. It'll have extra stuff, but that's okay. Okay, so try to draw two planes intersection, intersecting. We don't want them to look parallel. We want to look like they're connected, right? One goes through the other. This is the hardest one. Not too bad. Now try to show that this one's going off behind it, right? If you can. Try to show that it's going, that it keeps going, maybe. I like that, though. That's not bad. I like that. Good job. Here's, here's what the book would look like. Okay? If the book is doing this, we want to have a plane like we're used to having, right? A rhombus or a actually more like a parallelogram. And then we would have another one coming in here like so. And what they typically do is they will I should have drawn that for a bigger should have drawn that more like this. All right, so do you see that we have something that kind of looks like a two planes intersecting? Okay. Now, to have it make it look more accurate, you have to dash some things. So we dash this way and dash this way. And then we have our solid line where the two intersect. Okay, and I'm not saying that mine is perfect either. But that's one way of drawing it. Okay. So we label our two planes. And we label our points. You want to see an easier way? Okay. We've all played in practice with drawing boxes, right? You've drawn cubes before when you've been doodling in class? You don't doodle? Oh, you miss out. Doodling helps you remember things. Okay? That kind of look like a box? Okay? In fact, it's not just two planes. We actually have a third plane, don't we? And that's okay. You just have extra. Nothing wrong with that. So if these are my two planes, do you want which two places do you want to be the planes that we're talking about? Top. top and right. All right. So the top one is plane R. The right side is plane S. So where do those two intersect? Yeah, that 
that back corner, right? P would be this back point, and Q would be this point. Oh, AB, sorry, not PQ, AB. It's a different problem in my head. So A would be this point, B would be this point. So that's not too hard to draw, right? We can do that. Okay. Last example. Name two different planes that contain segment, sorry, not segment, line QT. M is a point. M is this intersection between these three faces. We have it. This is the first time we've seen this one. Maybe you might have in your other geom in other like seventh and eighth grade math. Maybe one, two, eight, maybe. All right. So we need to find a plane, actually two planes that contain that edge. The front one and the bottom one. All right. So how are we going to name the bottom plane? R S. How many letters to name a plane? RSQ. RS so plane RSQ would be perfect. Okay. Then the other one you said was the front face, right? How would we name this front face? NMT would be perfectly fine. And any combination of those, right? You could start with PQ. Right, since that's the segment that you're the the line that you're trying to get, we could have started with P and Q and said S or P Q R, right? But as long as we have three letters that include P, the plane that has P and Q in it, we're in good shape. So far, so good. All right, one last thing I need to talk about. Your problem number twenty is going to ask you to draw a ray that does one thing and another ray. It's coming up. A ray, another ray that does something else, right? Bless you. The common mistake that students make is they try to put, if we need a ray MN, okay, and we need a ray NQ, for example, students draw those and they have no problem with drawing rays, right? But this N has to be the same point. We can't have two rays or two point ends on the same drawing. Does that make sense? Because it would be confusing. So if ray MN was 1, that means I'm starting at what? M. And I'm going in the direction of N. Then this is ray NQ, right? So it starts at N. So it has to be that same N. And it's going in the direction of Q. So you pick another point somewhere out here called Q. And you've got your drawing. So something like that for number 20. Make sense? All right. Same. If you have the same point listed, it has to be the same same letter list. It has to be the same point. All right. Here's your assignment. Um, which we're called. I'm sorry. This is um, actually a mess. It's kind of like an array forming another angle. It's There's no good. They would be coplanar, yes. But they're certainly not collinear. Okay. Unless you, actually you could make it. Um, a collinear one as well, because Q could be on that way. Yep. But they're definitely, um, there's no special name for it. All right, so here's your assignment. Okay, so this assignment is straight from your gold sheet. Today is the 21st, right? So if you have your gold sheet, you can copy it down from here, or you can write it down from the board, or remember it's in the class calendar and on your phone if you sync your, your phone with it. Okay? Your book is the red book beneath your desk, right? So you're welcome to borrow the red book. And and you can work from your assign from your book for to do your assignment.